Canada, a country known for its humanitarian efforts, finds itself at the center of an international investigation in Somalia during a peacekeeping operation after two soldiers beat a Somali teenager to death while strung out on an experimental drug that the government forced on them. This resulted in the disbandment of the Canadian Airborne Regiment and a dark stain on Canada's military. The question remains, why did it take the government over two decades to remove the controversial drug? This is the story of the Somalian affair, the dark story Canada doesn't want you to know. Somalia is in the midst of a famine and civil war after the collapse of the country's government. This sparked warlords to take control of the country, leading to a nationwide crime wave. The United Nations sent in emergency supplies, but they were constantly being captured and ransomed by armed gangs. This led to the United Nations requesting that armed peacekeepers be sent to Somalia. Under pressure from the large amount of media coverage, Canada agreed to deploy troops under the name of Operation Deliverance to participate in the American-led Operation Restored Hope. Through careful selection, the Canadian government ultimately decided on the Canadian Airborne Regiment. Airborne Regiment was an elite unit that had previously been deployed to Cyprus on peacekeeping operations. But they quickly found themselves in the middle of a war zone when Turkey invaded the small country. Alongside British troops, the unit recaptured the island's international airport to prevent more Turkish troops from entering the country. They then assisted with delivering relief supplies and attempted to prevent the conflict from escalating further weeks before the 1,400 Canadian Forces members were deployed to Somalia. The government mandated all of them to receive the anti-malaria drug, Mifiquan, and to continue its usage throughout the deployment. Unknown to the soldiers, this drug has been known to cause mood swings, panic attacks, hallucinations, and suicidal thoughts. Once the troops touched down in Somalia, peacekeeping efforts began. However, the locals were not very receptive to the Canadians. During a bridge reconstruction project, a man approached the soldiers with an AK-47. They quickly confiscated the rifle and escorted him from the area, only for him to return later with a machete, demanding the rifle back. Multiple warning shots were fired, with one striking the man in the foot. When the project was nearing completion, the soldiers found themselves in a dangerous standoff with over 200 Somalis. The mob began hurling rocks at the soldiers, forcing them to fire upon the crowd. The locals continued to attack soldiers while on patrol and attempted to loot multiple Red Cross depots. All attacks were successfully thwarted by the Canadians, in some cases requiring lethal force. Throughout all of this, the troops reported issues with the malaria drug, calling the days they would receive the dose Psycho Tuesdays. Soldiers reported horrid nightmares and hallucinations they referred to as meflomares. Four months into the deployment, a decision by Captain Michelle Rainville was made to reclassify petty theft by the Somalis as sabotage, allowing the use of deadly force. Rainville ordered that food and water be placed in a trailer near the edge of the compound, where it was visible to passerbys, and have soldiers lay in the bed of a truck across from it with night vision to catch would-be thieves. Soldiers initially argued that this was baiting, but their words were silenced. That night, two men broke into the compound and made their way to the trailer. Corporal Ben Click was watching them from the truck bed and ordered them to stop. Click yelled at two nearby soldiers to get them men as they attempted to escape. They responded by opening fire on them. One of the fleeting men went down, and the soldiers executed him where he fell. They had shot the men so many times that they reportedly could not move the body without it falling apart. What was remaining of his body was used to demonstrate medical procedures. Twelve days later, while on patrol, Captain Michael Sox found 16-year-old Sudane Aron hiding in an abandoned American military base across the road from the Canadian base. Under the impression the boy was a saboteur, he was restrained and held in a munitions bunker on the Canadian base. Sergeant Mark Adam Boland was guarding the boy when Master Corporal Clayton Matchy came to relieve him. Matchy began to beat the boy, following by stripping him of his clothes and waterboarding him. Boland ordered Machi to stop, and he left the bunker. An hour later, Private Kyle Brown took over guard duty and brought Machi with him. Boland told the two, I don't care what you do, just don't kill the guy. Brown responded that he wanted to kill him. Boland and Machi then went for beers in the mess hall. When Machi describing how he wanted to torture the boy, Machi returned to the bunker and savagely beat the boy with Brown. After several hours of beatings, Arone's final words before he fell unconscious were, Canada, Canada, Canada. Medics attempted to revive the boy, but the beating was far too severe. Two days later, 
Machine Brown, were arrested and charged with second-degree murder and torture. While in his cell, Machi hung himself but survived. However, he was left with serious brain damage and was deemed unfit to stand trial. More than a decade later, the charges would be dropped. Brown was sentenced to five years in jail and was dismissed from the army. Multiple other soldiers received less severe charges for their involvement. Canada would pull out of Somalia in 1993, and the Airborne Regiment would be disbanded in 1995. However, throughout all of the trials, the role of Mefloquin was never discussed. Canada continued to issue the drug to troops until 2017. When they changed their preferred malaria drug, it would be discovered that the side effects of the drug would also mimic PTSD symptoms. However, the military argued that there was limited evidence to support this. In response to this statement, in 2019, over 1,000 veterans would sue the Canadian government over the use of this drug. The soldiers alleged they were lab rats and were not presented with the potential side effects. America also had similar lawsuits associated with the drug, such as the case where Army Staff Sergeant Robert Bales killed 16 civilians while on a deployment in Afghanistan. Although those were very dark years in Canada's military history, they were not the only country that faced criticisms for their actions in Somalia. American soldiers were involved in the deaths of three young boys. Pakistani troops were accused of several civilian deaths, and Belgian soldiers took photographs of themselves torturing a Somali to death. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. We've got lots of great stories in the works. Thank you all so much for watching.